Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another tutorial episode of War in the East 2. Since in the last video we discussed about the basic unit infobox in this tutorial, we will talk about the what I call the advanced unit infobox. And of course the table of organization and equipment, also known as TOE. Now, the advanced unit info box can be accessed by right-clicking um, the basic unit info box, and I called it the I call this the advanced unit info box because it's the amount of information that you find here is simply um, overwhelming. Uh, first of all, from the title in the in the, say, in, in the first square, uh, we do have the name of the division and also this W. This W um, allows you to open the unit Wikipedia, which is like um, the War in the East Wikipedia, uh, and, it, and it's simply amazing because for I would say all of the major units and divisions and army corps, both for the Axis and uh, Red Army's side. Uh, there are just tons of information. Uh, there, yeah, every unit has it, its own like chapter paragraph, in which all of the movements and the battles and the the, the main events that um, got this this unit involved are described. So, a big kudos to everyone who spent his or her time in uh, in preparing uh, all of this. And interestingly, we can also have a look at. Um, how many battles this unit won and lost throughout the campaign. Now, if we focus a little bit on the um, left, uh, left hand side section of the box, uh, we do have some symbols that we have seen already before, like we have the uh, status here, the uh, fatigue and the combat, and the combat preparation points. Um, combat value. There are two numbers. The first one indicates the attacking combat value. The second one is the defensive combat value. And then we do have the, the table of organization and, and equipment. And again, we do have two numbers. And even though there are two numbers, we can get three types of information. The first one is uh, by looking at, at the raw numbers. We do have 106, 106, which means that overall we do have more elements in the division than the um, let's say canonical uh, table of organization and equipment uh, ones. In, in particular we do have an average of 106% um, elements compared to the 100%. Um, what these two numbers mean? Now the first number indicates all of the ready elements but not the damaged ones while the second number takes into account both the ready and the damaged ones now what i'm talking about um we need to have a look at the right hand side window especially in this section here elements these are all of the elements really the the raw material that the materials that um make make up this division we do have armored cars motorized rifle squads pioneer uh, recon squads at rifles and so on and so forth now if we had some of these elements as classified as damaged because they took part in some combat or they were uh, disrupted um the first number would be lower than the second one because the, the, the first number only takes into account the ready elements while the second number takes into account the ready and the damaged um, elements now if we click on this toe uh, we can better understand why in this case we do have 100 106 percent compared uh, to the 100% of the TOE. Because if you look at the left hand side of the uh, box, we do have the 41 tier 3 Panzer Division. This is the TOE of the um, of this Panzer Division. So what the division should have. And <coughs> I apologize for that. 
we see that we, in some cases, we do have more elements than what we are supposed to have. In, the, in particular, we do have uh, three more armored cars and nearly double the amount of light armored cars. On the other hand, we are also missing some engineer squads and we do not have uh, medium field guns nor any self-propelled flak. And now, if we calculate the... Um, uh, I don't know if it's called the ponderated or, or weight um, average of these numbers, then we get 106%. Now, um, if you want to investigate more and get more information about which specific elements are uh, composing or are part of the division, you can click on this uh, square. Now, what are uh, these elements? So. These indicated here are the basic elements, while this one, let's say, this one here are the categories of the elements. And the best example to show you this is by looking at, for instance, at the artillery or the um, AT guns. Um, in the, let's say, in theory, this division should have 24 105mm um, howitzers and 8 uh, 150mm howitzers. Uh, in reality, the 16th Panzer Division has 24 105mm howitzers and 12 uh, 150mm um, heavy um, howitzers, and that's why we do have 112% um, TOE in the uh, category of the artillery. Uh, in this case, that occurs from what I've seen only at the beginning of the scenarios, um, we do have um, some light armored cars that are now part of the armored car uh, category. I have no idea why. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know why. Um, I think that this can happen if you have a shortage of, uh, let's say, light or let's say armored cars, so that uh, in the logistics phase, um, some light armored cars are taken from the pool and put in place of the armored cars, but I, I am not sure about this. I need to um, experiment uh, more um, into uh, this one. And then if you want to know more about the the next TOE, well, you can click on this one and it, it will show you that on turn, in, so sorry, in 19 turns, the TOE of the division will change into this 42A TOE 3 Panzer Division. And here you can see um, all the um, differences. Uh, the maximum TOE is a number that, that you can set uh, if you want to <coughs> change the uh, maximum TOE of any specific uh, unit from 100 to 50. Then we do have the higher HQ which is, in this case, the 14th Motorized Core. And if you click on it, you can change, uh, pick any new um, higher HQ that you want, while the operational HQ is the HQ to which your um, core HQ is currently um, attached to. Um, morale um, the first number indicates the morale of the unit, while the second number indicates the national morale. Um, I will make a, a tutorial on this one, so more on this uh, when we will talk about the morale tutorial. Um, nation is quite uh, intuitive, is Germany, if we look at, for instance, um, <coughs> this uh, is Slovakia, so that's quite, yeah, there's not, not too much to say about it. And now, um, in these four numbers, we can actually, yeah, here we can actually find the, the numbers behind the percentages that I've shown you in the previous tutorial. Um, the first number always indicates the amount of supplies, fuel, ammo and support that the division has, and the second number always indicates the amount of uh, supply, fuel, ammo and support that the division needs, and the same is true for the uh, vehicle vehicles uh, section. Um, construction value, I will talk about this more in the fortification tutorial, but basically it tells you how fast this unit will build fortifications during the logistics phase, and the transport cost indicates the, the, the cost that the division has to pay 
if it has to be moved via railway or uh, sea transports. Um, this is basic, uh, the, the section that doesn't have really a line motorized is actually um, a flag status. Now, motorized means that during the supply phase, all of the elements of the division um, will use uh, trucks or le let's call them vehicles to get supplies from the depots. Now, um, I, I will talk more about supplies in details because this is a crucial aspect of war in the East too. Um, the flag status can be uh, different and we, we can have non-motorized followed by a, a number. Now, if there is number zero, it means that the non, no element of the division is using vehicles for supplies. And so if you see the number zero, it means that um, the division is using no vehicles. If you see like the, the number one in brackets, like in this case, then it means that the division will use vehicles only to retrieve supplies. And if you see the number two, then it means that the, all of the non-infantry elements of the unit uh, will use um, vehicles to retrieve supplies from a um, neighboring um, depot. And let's go back. And supply status means in supply because the, the division is not isolated. And the last line here, withdraw. I would not call it withdraw, I would rather call it redeployment. Um, here is indicated the turn and the final destination that the division will will have like on turn 94 the 16th panzer division will be moved to the western europe theater box on turn 103 to the italian theater box and then on turn 128 will be moved back again on the map now this can be uh, let's say overrun if you are playing with the enhanced theater boxes control if you want a more challenging game you can well you should avoid you should not play with this um, box checked and therefore you see that now we cannot uh, move around or remove the uh, withdraw sch schedule for the 16th panzer division anymore and we have uh, discussed about uh, by, about a bit the elements um, here below there are the potential support units attached to the um, division, to the, to the unit. Again, I will make a tutorial about support units because it's, they are quite um, important. And then we do have some uh, additional uh, buttons up here. Supply details opens a window that again, it's, it's very detailed and I will talk about it more when I will talk about supplies. Um, transfer units. Uh, transfer units allows you to move your division in the other theater boxes and here it's in is indicated the uh, the delay in turns that are needed to move the division to the um, selected theater box and then this band unit if you really want to uh, get rid of uh, this unit of course i would not recommend to disband your <laughs> precious panzer and motorized divisions um normal infantry divisions can also benefit from the temporary temporarily um motorization uh this um can can be let's say um achieved by clicking on this and by paying a price in administrative points and of course in uh, trucks taken from the common pool. Now if you want to motorize the unit you can um, uh, retain the motorization for multiple turns uh, or you can just motorize for one turn and um, the more you keep the division motorized the more you will have to pay for in terms of um, administrative points as well as in terms of vehicles but of course temporarily motorized units as i mentioned before will gain uh three times their movement movement points 
um, compared to a normal uh, non-motorized division. And this can be quite, uh, let's say, interesting to really blitzkrieg through the Soviet Union with your um, temporarily motorized infantry divisions. Um, coming to the HQ, I'm bringing up the, um, let's say, army group HQ just because of uh, some more uh, options. Again, here we can play around with the um, assault uh, status, and uh, also we do have some more um, options here. Uh, set color, it's it's uh, again quite intuitive. You can change the color of the uh, ar army, so army, army group, yeah, of the um, sorry, army, no, not army group, army. And all of the uh, subordinates will then, of course, uh, change color. Here, here you can change the supply priority. Here you can see all of the subordinates, and the CR in brackets means uh, commander's re commander's report. Um, you can relocate your unit, and uh, this is quite uh, useful if you want to, um, like order an emergency withdrawal to a friendly hex and this this withdrawal of course comes at a cost you will lose some um, elements here um, some elements uh, which are part of the HQ uh, and of course the the elements will gain also uh, fatigue now the interesting thing is that um, HQs and yeah HQs uh, only have the so-called um, support elements and you want to have as many support elements as possible to maximize all of the um, bonai plural of bonus of the um, HQ um, you do have here uh, three elements which are the total support the organic support and the total support need now the total support is basically the, the, the number of support that this specific HQ can provide to its subordinates during the logistics phase and the total support need is what the subordinates need during the logistics phase. And the organic support is the amount of ready uh, support that can be provided during the logistics phase so essentially you you would you want to have always the total and the organic support higher than the total support need and because this is an HQ unit um, HQ unit uh, often uh, if not always are responsible for handling um, support units um, again, I will talk about this more in the support unit section, but here you can have an, a brief overview of all of the subordinates uh, uh, which are part of the first uh, Panzer group. We do have four um, HQs, which are regular units. We do have a, um, a motorized infantry brigade, and then we do have some artillery, some support units like the a uh, 602nd artillery battalion, some self-propelled artillery, and the aircraft artillery, and one uh, Panzerjäger uh, battalion. Um, I think that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, of course, if you look at the um, core level, you, you do have um, uh, divisions and also other types of support um, uh, units. And uh, yeah, this concludes the um, advanced uh, unit infobox tutorial. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial because I can already uh, spoiler it. We will talk about leaders. Until then, my friends, take care, stay safe and well, I'll see you soon in the next tutorial.